every dog is an individual. And you have to train every one of these dogs the way the dog will allow you to. You cannot force this into this dog or this dog that may be a little higher end. Um, you can't, you have to give it the, the appropriate pressure or lack of pressure, you know. And if you're working a certain dog and what you normally do isn't working, it is not the dog's fault. Okay, it's not the dog's fault that this isn't working. It is your fault for not finding another way to make it work. And that was his philosophy is that every dog has a different way of learning. And so if you do this and this and this and this on every dog and it happens to work, but now you get this dog and it doesn't work, then change. Mm hmm. You have to change. You know, one of the greatest things he ever told me is when you're training a dog, there's two animals, you and the dog. One of you two are supposed to be the smart one. And if you allow this dog to make you upset, to get you mad, um, to make you lose your temper or, or to give up on the dog, then you are no longer the smart one. Mm -hmm. When was this when you you got introduced to this fellow and, and started training with him. Oh, it would have been early eighties. Was, was his philosophy then, was that, was that different than a lot of trainers out there? Cause it seems like, you know, it wasn't that long ago in the history of dog training where they were maybe lumped into categories like, well, you train a lab this way, you train a GSP this way. Do you think, do you think he was kind of ahead of his time? Oh, he, he was way ahead of his time. You know, in fact, he, he trained with one of the top pros in the United States. He trained under a, a gentleman named Jim Kappas. Mm -hmm. Jimmy would say, you know, why don't you try this and see if this would help with this dog or if that would work. And so many times that was the turnaround for that particular dog. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and Jim Kappas would look at Jimmy and, and go, how did you figure that out? He said, well, the dog told me. And that's, that's the, the big thing about uh, the system, or I, I don't even like to call it the system. The way that Jimmy taught me to train is listen to the dog. The dog will tell you what he'll allow and what he won't allow, you know? And, and if you try to force something into the dog, that it won't allow, then it makes both your lives not good. So you know? can you give us an example of that? Like, uh, you know, are the dogs shutting down or what are you seeing in a, in a situation like that where you've asked a dog something they're not going to do? What are you seeing? Well, it, a lot of times what will happen is it's, it's unclear to this particular dog. So then when you try to push a certain thing on them, they get a panic. When a dog panics, it cannot think. When it's in a panic state, all it can do is try to think about the way out. Mm -hmm. How do I get out of this? How do I get away from him? How do I, you know, make this not happen? So the dog is not thinking at all about what you're trying to get it to do. So that's extremely counterproductive, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And all these dogs are different. Some are very high energy, very bold. Yeah, I mean, you could put a ton of pressure on them and they come back with their tail wagging. And uh, some are, aren't. Uh, for instance, the, the greater percentage of the British Labs are a soft, gentle dog. And they will not tolerate being having a lot of force put on them. Mm -hmm. And... They're not like a lot of the American dogs where you could give them this force and they'll come back with their tail wagging. A lot of these dogs will hold a grudge. Mm -hmm. And, and so you, you have to be able to train them to the point where you're not getting them, getting them to the place where they will hold this grudge mm -hmm. and just read the dog. Um, I trained under two different pros, uh, uh, Jimmy Benson, the original guy, and then another guy named Chris Smith. 
and they both have the exact same opinion on dog training. One says that training dogs is 90% psychological, 10% force. And Chris put it this way. He said, training dogs is 90% calm, 10% force. So if I can convince this dog Mm -hmm. that doing this is the fun, right thing, then I don't have to force this dog into doing this. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and they both had that same opinion on it that, you know, it's, it's more psychological than it is physical. And, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, my assistants who have trained under me over the years, that's what I've tried to get them to understand is that you have to have a, a, a psychological bond with this dog. The dog needs to understand you and you need to understand where the dog is coming from. As far as, the, you know, the physical part of training dogs, I could train a monkey to train dogs. Okay. Take a rope, walk him at heel, sit here, sit here, you know, but I can't teach you is how to feel the dog. If I can't teach you how to feel the dog, how to get a one-on-one emotional, psychological bond with this dog, then as Jimmy would put it, you're not a dog trainer. You're just a guy that put up a sign that says you're a dog trainer. (laughs) You know, and (laughs) we we run into that so much, you know. Mm -hmm. A lot of my training here, unfortunately, is fixing dogs that somebody else had before. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but it's that, that psychological part of it that so many people don't, can't or don't figure out, Mm -hmm. you know? And it's, is that an experience thing? I mean, is it just not having enough experience with individual dogs or is it, is it, it, it's part experience and it's part willingness to change. Mm -hmm. Okay. Some people don't have the willingness. Some people look at a dog and to them, it's an animal. They don't want to have this connection with the dog. Here, I want to show you how to do this and you're going to do it or else. Okay. Well, if you have that attitude, it, you know, your, your life as a dog trainer is going to be very tough. Mm -hmm. The people who are listening to this are, you know, amateur handlers who might own half a dozen dogs in their entire life. Uh, Yeah. Uh, and it seems like, you know, you're talking about that first chocolate lab that you really had experience with where you're like, this this dog showed me what they're capable of. Do you think yeah. that a lot of times when you're talking about this psychological bond, instead of instead of trying to get a dog to do something through force or fear that just doesn't get positive results, developing this bond like you're talking about, do you think it's just oftentimes maybe people aren't aware that that's even possible or they just haven't seen somebody working with a dog that's really synced up? And that, that is it. You know, I've had several assistants over the years and um, they watch how I interact with the dogs. And the one, the one guy that was working for me for a while, he said, you know what? He said, uh, he said, I thought I was a dog trainer till I got here. He said, you know, the volume of dogs that you go through here and the way that you handle it is so much different than anything that I've ever been taught before. And same with my last assistant. He said, I've been training dogs now for about nine years. And he said, everything I was doing was kindergarten compared to the college stuff that you're teaching me. And I said, well, that's because you were always taught this is how you do it, period. Well, there is no, you know, exact way to train a dog Mm -hmm. because every single dog has its own uh, personality. It has its own amount of pressure it can take or not take it. You know, um, so many of the dogs can be what we call spooky, you know, and a spooky dog is afraid of everything. So how do you get it to not be afraid? You know, and I show these guys that like when we train dogs, the first thing we do is take the dog out of the kennel and we go sit down on these benches that I have spread around the property. And you sit down on the bench, you put the dog in your lap and you start out by having a one-on-one time with the dog. 
some petting, you know, letting them lick your face, just just becoming a getting a bond. And then you go to work versus these guys who take a dog out of a kennel, they throw a rope on them, they start yanking them around, they throw them back in the kennel. Well, that dog really doesn't have a, a, a desire to work for you that hard. Mm-hmm. Where these other ones are now, you become more of a, a, a friend or, or somebody they can trust. Mm-hmm. You know, because dog training is all about 100% confidence. Okay. Um, the dog has to be confident enough to sit and stay sat. The dog has to be confident enough to come when called and know that it's going to be all right. Um, then when you start getting into advanced work, you know, handling, um, doing water cheats, cover cheats, all this stuff, you have to give the dog all the information in order for it to be confident in what it's doing. Because when they're unconfident, then everything is unsure. Then they make mistakes. If they make a mistake and then you make a correction, now all of a sudden it became not so fun out there. You know, but if they have the confidence to do this stuff, you know, for instance, teaching a dog to handle. Um, Jimmy, you know, when we're teaching dogs to handle, one of the last things we do is called a swim by where we teach the dogs to handle in water. Mm-hmm. Well, they should be fully handling on land first so that you are 100% sure they understand right, left, back, right, left, over, straight, back, straight in. Okay. <clears throat> because it gets more difficult on the water. And Jimmy taught me the swim by was a minimum of two weeks, minimum. When I trained under Chris Smith, he said he could do his swim by in 45 minutes. Okay. So you see Uh how different it is. But Jimmy's way, the dog was absolutely sure of what it was doing was the right thing. Uh, The way that Chris did it was like so many of these trainers who do a little obedience and a little water work and a little this, a little of that. And then they try to finish it while they're in the field. Mm -hmm. But when you're trying to finish it in the field, Sometimes it doesn't go well. Sometimes it never gets done right. Um, for instance, uh, uh, when we train dogs here, we do 100% of the obedience right up front, where you'll see several dog trainers. The first thing they do is put the dog on a long rope, and they go out and throw pigeons for them and get the dogs all revved up and all birdy and, and crazed you know, for birds. And then they come back and do a partial obedience. Well, I've seen many of those dogs in my years of guiding where the gentleman come out to the field, they open up the door, the dog jumps out, they hit the field, and all of a sudden this dog is running down the field, blowing the birds out, and they're calling them and hollering at them. And the trainer told them, oh, yeah, he's all color conditioned. Now they're hitting the dog on the collar. It's not working. They're turning it up. Now the dog is getting more electricity than it should be getting Mm -hmm. and and started to panic and run even harder. Well, the whole thing blows up where we do obedience and we finish it. So this dog is now completely obedience trained. It's on the collar. When I say sit, it sits. When I say here, it comes. When I say heel, I can go for a five-mile walk. Now, I can take that dog into the field and have complete control. So now we start them on the birds and start the bird work, and we're never starting the bird work with an out-of-control dog. Is, do you think this is a symptom of, of some trainers? Um, you know, They want to show the owner something flashy, or they want to say, hey, we're getting all this stuff done. Because it's, it's so common you know, with amateur handlers, too, to, to skip steps because they want to get to the fun, cool stuff and not understand the basics or have to have to be rock solid, and not false positives and all that stuff. Is that, it that happens all the time? And it's, it all, it's how fast can I get to the fun stuff? Mm-hmm. Well, again, Jimmy taught me that you do not train dogs. 
you build a dog and you build it one piece at a time. And it's like a pyramid. If that obedience isn't done first and right, how do you build anything on top of it? 